Well, you're going to love this segment if you have an animal, if you have a cat or a dog, because with me is Dr. Marty Becker. And, and you work with the Dr. Oz Show as well, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been doing Good Morning America for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And they, the producer that discovered me, discovered Jack Hanna, also discovered uh, Dr. Oz. And then he was such a superstar that all of a sudden he saw Oprah. And Oprah starts calling him America's doctor. And right. then yeah. when he got his own show, I started as part of the court team. He started calling me America's veterinarian. So I thought, you yeah, know, that's a pretty good title for this little farm boy from southern yeah. Idaho. But... Uh, I'm still a practicing veterinarian. You know, I play a veterinarian on TV, but I still practice at two different uh, facilities in northern Idaho. And I, I just say I've been a lifetime pet lover. I've loved pets on the family farm uh -huh. since I was a little kid and just lucky enough to present, uh, represent our profession to, to pet owners. Well, in addition to being a real life veterinarian and one on TV, you're also an author. Right? That's and my 20th book, believe it or not. Uh, Your right. Cat, the Owner's Manual. I've been lucky enough to have sold over 8 million books. I've had three New York Times bestsellers, so I'm hoping uh -huh. this is the fourth. But it's probably, it's probably the best book we've written because the subject had so much unturned earth. And we have so many misconceptions that cats are the pet of convenience, that they're just little small dogs, and we'll treat right. them like little small dogs. And, and, and I'm joking, half joking when I say this, that it's a really great book with the world's lousiest title because your cat, the owner's manual, almost sounds like a startup of a comedy skit. Uh, you know, you're bringing the wild inside with a cat and they're never gonna be completely tamed. They're never gonna bend to the human will, nor would we want them to. Those of us that have cats, we like that. Uh, you know, dogs are kind of like perpetual toddlers that follow you around and right. yes, mom, yes, dad. And, and cats are like teenagers sometimes, like they're up in their room and they time to eat, all right, I'll come down and I'll say hi to you, you know. But, uh, well, but we, I love them both. But uh, Well, this book is very timely for me because uh, I've never had cats before. Mm -hmm. I'm about to um, get two cats mm -hmm. um, along with the two or three dogs, three mm -hmm. dogs that I have. Mm -hmm. So I don't know a whole lot about cats. What is it, when you talk about um, some of the... Uh, the things that people don't really know about cats. Um, um, what would be number one on that list? Number one would be that we've been feeding them wrong, probably. That we, we tend to think of them like, uh, we, we feed them like a dog. We, we just put dry food down right. and they graze. They eat free choice. And we now know we've been doing that wrong for 40 years. That wow. What you actually want to do, rather than dry food, you want to feed them canned food. And you want to feed them meals like you do a dog. And this goes against what most people do. So at Almost Heaven Ranch where we live, we have four dogs, four cats. We feed them, because I work out of my home, we feed them four to five times a day. And we don't put, we feed dry and canned, but mostly canned. But what we do is rather than just, if you think of a cat in the wild, and all of them derive from a desert, a wild cat in Africa, just like all dogs come from wolves. It takes five steps to eat. They gotta detect their prey, pursue it, apprehend it, kill it, and now I get to eat. When you just plop the food in the bowl, you're going right to step five, which is just eat. And so it's boring. And these cats were these lethal hunters. Like in, in evolution, mm -hmm. the better the hunter you were, the more you could sleep. Well, humans were lousy hunters before guns and dogs helped. Right. So we could only sleep eight hours a night. Well, these cats sleep 18, 20 hours a night. So, but that four to six hours they're awake, it was almost all spent in pursuit of food. You know, 80% of that okay. time. Okay, so when you're feeding your cat, mm -hmm. you. What do you uh, withhold by withholding from the cat? It gives the cat uh, some sense of uh, of of a hunt. hunt for the prey. Yeah, and what yeah. we do is we split it up. Like we'll take uh, little tiny uh, inexpensive dishes, mm -hmm. and we put just a dab, almost like going to an expensive Vegas restaurant where I always get a kick out of it. Cause some of the little tasting menus, you just get a tiny little bit. You know, right. it's not. Uh, you know, Golden Corral, you know, or they slop the big thing on there. But we hide it around the house. Like, we'll put it under the, under the guest bed. <laughs> we'll put it at the top of the stairs, at the basement, by the front door, uh, uh, in the guest bathroom. Right. And these cats have to go looking for it. And then as far as the dry food, we put it in food puzzles that I liken all the time to slot machines. Uh, the cat has to drop it or turn it or spin it or manipulate it. And they never know what's going to come out. So it's like uh, the first time we used it with our cats, they were kind of looking at it and they could smell it in there. And my wife's going, oh gosh, this is cruel. Well, it's like when my wife does Sudoku or a crossword puzzle, I like to play poker or you're, or you're mm -hmm. uh, trying to crack it. It's that delightful apprehension uh, or anticipation, I should right. say, of eating. And so rather than just a mindless activity, it might take them anywhere from, from 30 minutes to an hour and a half to eat. Where do you find these um, mechanisms, these mazes? 
Uh, you can get them at any pet store. Yeah. Uh, there's one called Exerciser. It sounds like Exerciser, but it's right. E-G-G dash C-I-S-E-R. Another one's called Kitty Wobbler. And you might have a Kong toy for your dogs, those ones that look like the Michelin right. Mentor, those concentric rings. They have one that's open with a chamber for dogs and cats. It's a different version, but you actually put the kibble inside of there and these cats will bat it around or pull the string or hook it with their claw. Mm -hmm. And it's only when it comes out, it's like a weeble uh -huh. wobble. You know, it's, it always comes back up to its, its center, but only when they hit it one way does the food come out. And they'll just sit there and bat that thing around, <laughs> knock it around and pull it around. And, and it's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. Now having dogs, I've always learned or thought that the dry food was better than the wet can food. That's what we thought, yeah. yeah. Fact, is that true for dogs also? Uh, well, for dogs, we always thought dry food is better because they would, they would eat less and it was better for their teeth. Uh, we do recommend feeding dry food to most dogs still, but mm -hmm. for cats, we just got it wrong. And so we're getting cats that are overweight, we're getting cats that have uh -huh. diabetes, and uh, there's only there's a there's a certification in veterinary medicine called ABVP. It stands for American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. There's only 67 with a feline specialty in the United States, and there was four of them in one practice I visited in uh, Houston, Texas, on this tour. Mm -hmm. I said, "What message do you want me to take out to the millions when I'm on this tour?" And they said, "Tell them we've been feeding cats wrong for four decades." Wow. So, and the other thing you can do these cats. Let's go back to Desert Dweller. Uh, they come from Africa. They have a very low thirst drive. I'll tell you one thing, a dog in Vegas, when it's thirsty, it heads to the drinking fountain. Yeah, mine's right. jump in the pool. Yeah, they jump in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Cats have a yeah. very low thirst drive, so they tend to be dehydrated, and that causes medical problems. So, the, you know, the best 50 bucks you're going to spend is to get a drinking fountain for your cats. That's why they like to go. You might have seen them go to the water faucet or the shower or even right. drink yeah, out of a yeah, toilet. Yeah. Or the fishbowl. <laughs> yeah, and the best drinking fountains uh, have, a, have a stream that goes down. It hits a ramp and then goes into a pool. And so cats will either, some cats like to hit the, the, the stream, others coming down the, the, the little uh, slant part. And the crazy thing about cats, when dogs drink, they curl their tongue under and they ladle the water in their mouth. And it's real sloppy. You mm -hmm. see them, I don't know what kind of dogs you have, right. but they're doing the real fastest, water's going everywhere. Mm -hmm. Cats, when their tongue goes down, it doesn't even go in the water. It just touches the surface of the water and pulls up very quickly and the surface tension pulls a column of water up and they bite it. But the crazy thing is they do it four times a second. So their tongue is moving at the rate of one meter per second. That's how fast that is. And about every sixth or eighth time that they pull that column of water up, they swallow it. Bite, 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 swallow. Wow. How about uh, declawing a cat for when you're you know, living in a city and you're living in an apartment? And mm -hmm. So good, obviously, it doesn't sound like a good yeah, thing. But, I think back yeah. of uh, when I was a young veterinarian. I've been a veteran veterinarian of over 30 years. I mean, I've been married 33 years to the love of my life, so I'm lucky there and, and get to practice this mm -hmm. great profession. But I used to do uh, ear crops, used to do declaws, and now I just think back and I think, why did I do that? You know, Why would I do a cosmetic procedure on a dog and a cat? We highly recommend against it. Uh, clawing is such a natural behavior for cats. When you see them, they tend to do it after they wake up from a nap, uh, when they uh, get, done, uh, get done playing, when they get done eating. And what they do is, you've, you've seen this with your cats, is they reach up high and they'll get their full length and they'll pull down like this, straight down. And what they're doing, they're stretching, marking, yeah. they're stretching and they're yeah. marking territory. So it's like uh, gang signs, or it, it, what they'll do is they're marking territory with those mm -hmm. marks on vertical surfaces. They'll go down, they'll claw down, they remove their claw sheaths, they stretch, it's extremely pleasurable. Just like when your dogs wake up, they always do that kind of crazy mm -hmm. bow, you know where they stretch? Right. And for cats, you want them to be able to have that, that mental stimulation, the physical stimulation. Uh, the key though, what people, why they want to declaw them is because they're tearing their house up. So, and, and it gets so frustrating. People feel like, I got, a, I got a cat scratching post, and why won't this cat use the cat scratching post instead of my new piece of furniture right. that it's doing hieroglyphics on? And, and the key there is to, is to have a surface that they like. Some cats like horizontal surfaces, some like a vertical surface, some like cardboard, some like wood, some like carpet, some like rope. So, and so you gotta get a mixture of those surfaces. Don't put it in the far corner of the house away from the action. They like it by a window, by the food stations, by the water stations. And if there's one spot they've been doing it on, you move the ear scratching post right by it. And here comes the secret. You get a pheromone called feel away. Now feel away, when they rub against you with their cheek or they're rubbing against right. that couch and they're rubbing this stuff, they're depositing a pheromone on you that's the good housekeeping seal of approval for cats. I like you, I like that couch, it's safe and approved. There's a synthetic version of that you plug in like a Bath and Body Works diffuser right. and it's like, um, 
it's, it's just in the air. The dogs don't smell it, you don't smell it, uh, just the cats smell it, but I, I liken it to happy hour. It's like after work, you know, everybody's on each other's nerves, everybody's cranky, and all of a sudden you go out and you have a few drinks, and now everybody's like, hey, that was a great dinner. Everybody's laughing and patting each other on the back and high fives, and if they're not using the litter box, if they're scratching in the wrong place, or there's inner cat aggression, feel away, we'll reduce that up to 90%. And that, you sell that at uh, your local pet shop, you go, PetSmart, you go, that go type to place. Petco, Petco, go to Petco, yeah. uh, you can order it online, get it uh -huh. from the veterinarian, but and also for those cats that hate to go to the vet, which is every cat almost, right. uh, that's one of the reasons people don't want to take the cats to the vet. And, and if I was a veterinarian, I wouldn't want to take a cat to the vet. But I'll tell you the secrets for that. One is to keep that carrier out all the time. Like, f I call it fun furniture. Don't have it in the garage. Hey, we've got to take the cat into the vet tomorrow. Let's get the carrier out. The uh -huh. cat sees that carrier. Oh, gosh, their heart. Boom, 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 boom. So you leave it out. You give new treats in it. You find some savory meal down there, Granny's pot pie by Merrick's. You uh, have a new cat toy. Everything goes in that, that oh. carrier. And then the day before you go, you take that pheromone. You spritz it. Comes in a, also comes in a thing like cologne. Right. The day of the thing, you spray that. And a matter of fact, when you're looking at these cats on the cover of the book when you showed it, those mm -hmm. aren't my cats. Those right. are three different cats from three different owners uh -huh. who had never met each other. And when you see them, I look like the cat whisperer. Everybody's really <laughs> relaxed, everybody's right. happy, yeah, their yeah. ears are relaxed. Those aren't even my cats. Can you imagine three different owners, and we tell them, you know what, you go to this photo studio tomorrow, you're gonna meet two other people with two other cats and we're gonna take a cover mm -hmm. of a book. It's all because of that pheromone. Cats and dogs uh, inherently not get along? Uh, not true. Like we have four dogs and four cats. And uh, of our, our four dogs and four cats all get along. So, uh, you know, when cats run, dogs have a natural tendency to chase. Right. That's, just, that's just there. But, you know, if you have one of those cats, I've had cats run up the tree, which is, you know, and, and actually run up a tree in the middle of a blizzard and not come down for four days where I had to get a cherry picker out to get them out of the tree. But some dogs and cats just get along just like the cartoons. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you're, if you're gonna get, if you're having inner cat aggression or that kind uh -huh. of problem with them, you can use pheromones for both. Uh, but if you're going to get a cat for the first time, go to the shelter and have them give you a cat that's, that already knows it likes dogs or gets along well with dogs. Yeah. Socialized, yeah. yeah. Uh, we only have 30 seconds left, uh, but can I open up a can of tuna and feed my cat tuna? He's, uh, oh yeah, you say no, canned no, food? They, they, yeah. Love, they, love, they love meat. Anything with meat is perfect. Uh, make sure you do daily uh, oral care. You're not going to brush your cat's teeth, but use something like a CET oral hygiene shoe. It's a great treat when they bite into it. It uh -huh. squeegees the plaque off the tooth and has a dual enzyme action. Uh -huh. But uh, they'll live 15% longer if you do daily oral oh, care. Oh, that's great. I'll have to guess I'll have to put my Sonic Care in, uh, in storage. <laughs> hey, thank you doc very much, Dr. Uh, Martin Becker. Um, you can catch him on Dr. Oz and all these other shows. He's all over the place, and you can and he's signing books everywhere. You get these books. Uh, any you sell them at the pet shops as well as the uh, yeah, bookstores. Yeah, on Amazon, and, and you Amazon, can read the yeah. first chapter online at vetstreet.com. This is my online home, and you can read the first chapter for free. Thank you very much, Dr. Becker. Thank you. For more information about today's guests, to see past shows, or you can contact us about being on the show, simply go to theedbernsteinshow.com. That's the EdBernsteinShow.com.